Hello, everyone. Welcome to Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast in all of the internet. My name is Matthew Stoner. My name is Patrick Nisley. My name is David Howe, and uh, here with us is a very special guest... Brian Bonnet. Hey! What's up, everybody? Brian Bonnet's here right now. Very good. Got one person clapping. That's yeah. good. Yeah! <laughs> Sympathy clap. Yeah. Very good. How are you doing? Doing well. I'm, a- I'm excited to be here. Uh, this is number two time Very that I good. get to be here, uh, and I'm excited that I'm not like the heel this time, <laughs> uh, the only person in support of mobile games. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had you on the mobile games episode. Yes, the one that no one was excited to yeah. be on. <laughs> well, now you get to be on an episode where we talk about game consoles with mobile processors. Yeah. So. Yeah, Brian, you are here because we're about to celebrate the three-year anniversary of the Nintendo Switch. We're going to do a retrospective of what the last three years has been like and maybe uh, getting some speculation about what the next three years would be like. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, in this episode, we'll talk about the Yacht Club games presentation, uh, a new mythical Pokemon, and PAX East. There's a whole slew of topics. It's a mm-hmm. good slew of topics. It's going to be a good slew. one. Patrick, what do you got for us? Uh, I guess we have some shout outs to get through. Oh, yeah, first. yeah. We got some shout outs for sure. The coolest message that we got this weekend was from Ant Keeps Gaming streams on Twitch mm-hmm. uh, and YouTube. But, he was streaming on and, YouTube today. and YouTube, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he tagged us uh, because he did a, a podcast episode with Papa Genos. That's right. You guys might have heard of him because we apparently talk about him every <laughs> single episode, yeah, according to Ant Keeps Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he reached out to us. Uh, because, you know, as you said, we talk about him all the time. Papa yeah. Gino's, that is. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Basically, uh, Ant Keeps Gaming made Papa Gino's tell us to put <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ant Keeps Gaming on our podcast. Uh, so that's chill. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> guess well, what? It works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got to figure out. Uh, we're still a burgeoning little baby podcast. We got to figure out how to stream some audio in here. Yeah. But once we do, we'll get some we'll get some out of uh, out of town guests on the podcast. I also we also got contacted by uh, Dylan from Geekverse podcast, who yeah. uh, similarly reached out and said he loves our podcast and would love to guest sometime. So we do have to figure out some remote uh, <laughs> stuff before any of these people come on. I just want to say I'm totally flattered. <laughs> Whenever we got these two messages, I was like, oh shit. Also, a very cool thing that happened this week. Maybe not the coolest. Yeah, let's talk about more cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I like cool to us. James West talked about how he's anxious about when David talks about what games he's been playing because it's they're so voluminous. <laughs> <laughs> I do play a lot of games, man. It's it's anxiety inducing for me as well. <laughs> You're not alone. Well, it's I, a major ADD issue that I have. Every time I go on Facebook, it's like David announcing three new games that are on sale. Yeah, He's bought did. every one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't post a game sale on Facebook unless I've already bought it. <laughs> um, also, Kyle Baker uh, uh, wrote in response to David's offhand comment about uh, Roanoke Island related to Animal Crossing and had a nice uh, conspiracy theory there. And also some very interesting news. Uh, Baby's just got our first press badges. That's right. Uh, this March, we will be uh, going to South by Southwest Gaming and uh, covering the event uh, with our press badges there. And then also we got uh, media badges for E3 this year. Uh, so we will be at E3 giving you all the scoops, hopefully getting some interviews. So hopefully... Uh, the coronavirus doesn't <laughs> knock out both of these events. Yeah. There are we'll lots get of events where people globally fly to. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that progresses. But we'll get into that. First of all, we'll be covering all the games. I'm excited news for to you. see E3 because David, you and I, you and I are going. Yes. Uh, we, we are going on behalf of the Super Switch Podcast. Uh, and it's like a dream come true. Yeah, dude. I've never been to E3. I've always wanted to go. Dude. Yeah, that's very good. Pretty cool. Yeah, very excited for cool. y'all. That's gonna yeah, be awesome. I'm, I'm excited too. We'll 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 have some very special programming uh, planned for you around uh, June. So stay tuned. Uh, and then one last thing before we get into the news, and that is, hey, if you're a podcast listener and you love the podcast, like uh, apparently some of these other folks do, <laughs> then uh, leave us a nice five star review on Apple, or share the podcast with a friend, or reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just reach out to Papa Gino's anytime you <laughs> want to talk about our podcast. I'm sure he have, will not get tired of hearing about it. Yeah, have Papa Gino's <laughs> tell us that you should be on the podcast. <laughs> and it's so far, it's worked. Hundred <laughs> percent of the time, baby. 
All right, we're getting into it. Uh, so the Yacht Club Games presentation happened, and there were a few announcements there that are worth talking about. Um, did you guys get a chance to watch this or read about it? Or yeah, what? I wouldn't call it so much uh, presentation as it was a Nintendo Direct. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. did it in the exact style. Well, we've <laughs> talked about it. It's a popular way to disseminate information, and everybody's copying Nintendo on that. Um, so... Yes, they did that. They announced uh, some new projects. And I guess the big one might be Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. That was at least what they sort of ended on. Did you guys think that looked cool? Like sort of a puzzle game, but you also... A rogue light puzzle game. Yeah, it basically looked like a cross between like a normal falling block puzzle game and uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer. You know what I mean? It was like the kind of thing where like basically pieces only come in every time you move in kind of classic roguelike fashion. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a sort of almost like 8-bit looking game called Cyber Shadow, mm -hmm. which it looked kind of like the messenger almost. Yeah. I don't know, like a, a ninja sort of style platforming 2D game. It's like the fourth pixel ninja side-scrolling game we've gotten in, in a, a year recent, but in recent time but it still looks good yeah, yeah it does look kind of cool and then they said they'll be working on a sequel as well uh, uh to shovel knight yeah that was i don't think that was in the presentation but that was talked about in like an interview with them yeah that they are working which doesn't surprise you that's kind of what I thought might get announced right but uh yeah they're gonna they're uh, kind of thinking about next gen stuff too which is kind of funny to hear them talk about because their games aren't like Demanding. It, that's good. Shovel Knight Two is going to be the first 8K60 <laughs> game where it's like on the Xbox Dwarf Fortress, where it's doing like all these like complex physics <laughs> right. in the cloud. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, a new a mythical Pokemon was announced. Zarud. That's how I'm saying it. Uh, Zarudi. <laughs> Mm, dig -a -dig -a -dig. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> dig -a -dig -a -dig. what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, it's like a. I think it's like a giant. I don't know, grass type looking thing. I don't know what you, what does it look like to y'all? Uh, it, like it looks Pokemon. like a weird doggy like thing, but it also has grass vines that can grow off of its feet. And so it's a weird grass tentacle monster. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Basically what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't believe that, uh, uh, maybe there's like we don't know yet how to get this. It's no. or, right, like it's so. This is not like a DLC Pokemon. No, they're adding this to the game right. for free. Oh, yeah, okay. But it, they like they announced it, and we haven't, to my knowledge, it's not as far as I know either. accessible yet. Right. So we don't know exactly how that will integrate into the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's grass and dark, which is an interesting combo. Cool. So if you're looking for a weird tentacle demon, yeah. uh, and you're a Pokemon fan, today's your lucky day. Uh, and then in some sad news, uh, Kazuhisa Hashimoto passed away. And if you don't know who that is, they are the person who created the Konami code. Mm -hmm. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, uh, start, select. <laughs> just start. Or just start. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, that's like obviously the the code that was used in a lot of games actually uh, back in the NES days. And, and Most known as like the Contra code because that game was super hard that you could not really beat that game without doing that code. Uh, but yeah, it was in, it was in tons of Konami games back in the day. Uh, so that's sad, uh, but that's, a, it's such a huge part of gaming. Uh, and still the, there's a lot of games that still use that in some like, you know, Easter eggy capacity and stuff yeah. like that. It's always like kind of weird and a little bit enlightening when someone passes away who invented a very specific thing. Like for instance, the creator of copy and paste just mm -hmm. passed away the other day. And it was like, holy shit, like without this dude, my life would be so much harder. <laughs> I would know? be retyping everything. Yeah, like I would have personally never beaten Contra without the Konami code. Yeah, so. I would not got past the first level. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I would have not passed college unless I had copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! Damn, dude. That's why you are Matt. <laughs> but rest in peace. Uh, uh, we lost a, a, a stalwart of the gaming industry. Uh, wonderful 101 for uh, Switch and PlayStation 4 and PC and all that. Got a release date of May 19th in North America. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like, I think it's the next week in Europe if you're out there listening in Europe. And then I think it's like a month later in Japan. I should have yeah, that weird. exact date, but that's unusual. Or at least a few weeks later. It's in June sometime in mm -hmm. Japan, um, which is an odd choice uh, in this day and age when games usually come out at the same time everywhere mm -hmm. the kickstarter that they launched ends this week as well 
and the, they they listed the price too for the game, and I was a little bit confused about that at first because like the price in North America is uh, forty bucks yeah. for a physical copy, and then if you want to get it on the Kickstarter, it costs like a little bit more because of shipping and the uncertainty of the yen. <laughs> like right, like, right, like, right. Like it might be more, it might be less. But uh, I think the I think, I, the, I think you get the DLC. I think the digital copy is cheaper. It's like usually like an early bird special like that, or like backing on a Kickstarter will get you the game a little bit cheaper. But yeah, in this case, like Kickstarter is like pretty stringent with the shipping and handling stuff. Like that's set by Kickstarter a lot of the time. Gotcha. Um, so I can totally see that being a little bit more expensive. I do think Kickstarter. you get the DLC though if you back it on Kickstarter, That's and yes. so I guess there's your value as well mm-hmm. as a like unique physical. Like I think the. Uh, you know, the cover is unique as well. Yeah. I'm if sure. you care about that. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I will be getting this game digitally anyway. <laughs> uh, and there was like an interview with Platinum at PAX East, which is, uh, they also asked about something we'll talk about in a second. But I think, you know, I think this whole big company doing something on Kickstarter causes a little bit of, uh, I don't know. Like, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, skepticism. People are worried that it set a kind of bad precedent going yeah. forward. Um, you know, companies that have, you know, that have big hits or not necessarily huge hits, but have some capital already have like established studios going to Kickstarter put a bad taste in some people's mouth. Uh, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, and I think that I, I heard a lot of backlash about specifically this interview because you know they say like, well, they're they're kind of pressing them almost like, well, what is the money from the crowdfunding, you know, they're like, well, that was used to gauge interest, but they've obviously had it ready, you know? And so Mm -hmm. they kind of push them and say, well, it costs money to produce all the rewards. And it's like, well, but but that's, that should be part of your plan. Yeah. It's kind of like a, this is a way to pre-order the game in some sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I think a lot of the people that have issues with it are people that also have issues with pre-ordering in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And it's like, I personally don't think that you should pre-order games um, just because I've gotten burned by pre-orders in the past. And there's, Pretty much literally no point, especially if you're going to be buying it digitally, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And also the problem is like Kickstarter is used for like indie developers. Absolutely. Or uh, artists, musicians, uh, authors to publish their first work or their second work and they don't have a lot of money. And this is a, a, a company, a big company with like, you know, more than 20 employees yeah. using a platform for independent artists. Right, right. I mean, that's uh, Kickstarter has kind of evolved a little bit too, uh, as I understand. Y- Kickstarter has yeah. evolved a little bit, and that's also like because I get that argument of being like this kind of could potentially take away from smaller projects on Kickstarter, but that's like assuming that people have like a Kickstarter budget <laughs> that they have every month that is you know, and it's like this is going to be taking away from the Kickstarter fund or whatever this month, and yeah. I don't think that's necessarily realistic. I think I, I was listening to uh, Spawncast recently, and um, uh, John from Spawnwave was talking about kind of the way that he saw the reasoning for the Kickstarter. It made a lot of sense to me, which is basically Nintendo, I think... Didn't want to publish this game. Well, they didn't want to publish it multi-plat. Right. You know what I mean? That's why, like, the to publish on Nintendo is only $50,000. They had that in the bag. I think they already had fronted the cost of development for the port. I think they'd already done everything by the time the Kickstarter started. Clearly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's coming out in May. Right. And, and they didn't hide that either. It was like on their Kickstarter. Yeah. That says April too. So maybe you get the game early if you, yeah, a little, a little bit potentially. uh, I mean, shipping again with Kickstarter is a bit weird, but I think that the idea was basically Nintendo's like, we're not going to foot the bill for this for you to release this multi-platform, but if you can raise your own money, then sure. And that's why, you know, the Xbox goal was 500,000 or PC or was 500,000, something like that. So I, I don't even think they thought it was going to blow up to the point that it is at this point. I mean, I totally get the idea that they were gauging interest. This is a good way to gauge interest. Clearly there is more interest in this game now than when it released on Wii U. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily setting a bad precedent. I can see other big companies starting to go this route though, which is a little scary. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world. People are always going to pre-order games. You might as well pre-order before development has even begun. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, Platinum announced a new game called Project GG, uh, and my understanding for this is that it's sort of like a giant hero game. Um, I don't know. It's basically a- like an Ultraman game. Yes. It looks yes. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and so that's so an original uh, IP. I think this is going to be 100% owned by Platinum, which that's is kind of we've talked about how they want to do that. They want to own their own games and they have never done that. 
Um, and it will come to the Switch, it sounds like, as mm-hmm. well as uh, PlayStation 4 and all that kind of stuff. You know what the GG stands for, right? A go go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Goose Game. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say Gigi Allen. Yeah. <laughs> what if Gigi Allen was a giant? Anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and, uh, uh, this apparently is the Tencent game. Uh, this yeah. is like, the, basically, this is the where all the money from the Tencent buyout went to. You know what I mean? I think that, and it, buyout isn't the right word, but the cash injunction from Tencent basically went to opening a studio in Tokyo with like 100 employees to make this game. A minority stake right. in Platinum. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. And if you want to read, they they talked about this in the interview too. It's a Gamatsu interview if you want to, if you're out there and you want to read more about it uh, or or any of the other things they talked about, like the Kickstarter and stuff. But uh, moving on, unless anybody, I mean, we'd spend a long time talking about platinum. Well, no, that, I <laughs> mean, there's wanna, one more thing. Yes, uh, do you want in, in that uh, in the interview? Like they were yeah, in the uh, during like the Q and A at, at PAX that they were doing. Uh, somebody asked about um, some of the older IPs that they have making sequels to them, and uh, Hideki Kamiya was like, "Oh yeah, I'd love to make." Okami 2, Beautiful Joe 3, Scalebound. And he just started saying all these games that the gamers really want. And he was like, basically beg Capcom uh, in order to get these games to come out. Do you think a he's, bit of a trolley yeah, I was message. about to say, do you think he's being serious? I don't think he has any plans right now to be making any of these games, but I think that he would love to if he had funding for it. And that's kind of what he's saying. Um, it was just like a bit of fan service out there. to like That makes sense. It was just like wetting the appetite of fans. Microsoft owns Scalebound. I think so, yeah. And then, yeah, Beautiful Joe and Okami is Capcom. Right. Because they were part of Clover Studios. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so okay. those are, those are Capcom properties. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's been some grumbling that Scalebound might, may no longer be owned by Microsoft just because since it got canceled, Ooh, some of those gosh. rights went up in the air. So we'll see what happens to Scalebound. I think that would be a great Switch game, but. We can talk about that if that yeah. ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then talking about pre-orders, uh, and Animal Crossing is the top-selling item on the U.S. eShop, or at least it was a few days ago. I haven't checked um, like today or anything. But yeah, The Kickstarter for that new Animal Crossing game. <laughs> <laughs> it's going crazy right now. But that just proves that uh, that's selling super well right now, and it's not even out yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the launch of that game, it will potentially be really big. Uh, Benji Sales on Twitter is a pr- person who kind of pointed this out. I mean, anybody that looked at top selling could say that. But he's kind of estimating. We've talked about him on, on the podcast before. Something around six to seven million being like just opening quarter of that game. Uh, I think they could do that in the first month. So for sure, this might be another another game that we see on the next financial. Yeah, <laughs> report I think. I honestly really think this there. is going to rival uh, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield numbers like pretty quickly, um, and I think it's going to have a really fast growth rate as well. Um, th- Cause this is what we saw with Pokemon sword and shield too. Whenever they announced the double pack mm-hmm. was up for pre-orders, it was instantly number one. Right? right. And so we're seeing the same thing right now. Yeah. And I think that this one has a really good chance of catching like the touch point between the hardcore and casual gamers, because mm-hmm. like they did add a lot more features to the, uh, to the game. There's all the crafting stuff. There's all the different things you can do for sure. And so I think that it's going to get a lot of people into the series that have never been part of the series yeah. before. Animal Crossing has always been good at that anyway. Right. And I think they've just expanded on that aspect this time. Right. I don't want to spend too much time on what I'm about to say, but there's this weird crossover with Doom yeah. and uh, Animal yes. Crossing that yes. we didn't explore last episode. Yeah. Um, but like Doom is like a is a hardcore audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hardcore gaming audience and Animal Crossing is mostly not. Uh and it's such a weird intersection of <laughs> gaming cultures. Yeah. Like being positive towards each other. It's really beautiful and non-toxic. Yeah, yes. it's yeah. very cool. <laughs> yeah, especially with like a game you would expect to have a really aggro fan base yeah. for them to be like, oh, I hope you have a good launch day. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, yeah. cute. Yeah, I, I saw a GIF, like a really well-made like pixel art GIF today of like uh, the Doom Slayer like in Animal Crossing, like picking berries off trees, <laughs> like doing all the shit. And it's like, meanwhile, it's just Isabel, like fucking like blood splatting all over her face. It's you know, great, dude. The memes are endless. I think that, and I don't want to speak for y'all, but I think that we probably are more generalists in gaming. Like I like games that are all kinds of different games. Yeah, I love and all games. And I think Same. that might be more common than people think. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just, Using my own anecdotal I think, experience. I think especially the more time goes by and the more that like gamers have been raised as gamers since they were little children. I think 
you know, you you find people that play all sorts of games now. You know, it's not like everything was funneled from PS1 or PS2 era days into whatever genres you're into. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now it's like everything is available. You know, even, you know, something like Goose Game is yeah. wildly popular. And a lot of those people play Call of Duty. <laughs> right. So, right, right. right. <laughs> and as you get older, too, it's nice to have games that fill different types of things. Like, yes. I don't always want to be stressed out with every game I play. Right. right. And so it's nice to have that one game where I can just be like, I'm just going to chill out, pop some berries, and just talk to my animal friends. And, that's, <laughs> and that game you're talking about is Doom Eternal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but while we're talking about Animal Crossing, the uh, character creator has been shown off. And something really cool about this is that there's no gender. Like, you don't pick a gender and then pick your attributes. You just pick your attributes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really cool. Uh, I think a lot of people do, too, because this is getting shared around. Mm-hmm. But it's like you it's, – it's sort of a fluid gender create, uh, gender thing going on there. Yeah, you're only however much gender – as you are willing to think that that hairstyle is gender <laughs> <Right>. presenting. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like totally not even really a thing. And apparently none of the uh, villagers or the different people on the island will refer to you with any kind of pronoun throughout mm. it, which is pretty cool. That's and why, awesome. why would they, when they're talking to you? I mean, they could be, t- you could like overhear some people talking <laughs> about you. <laughs> like you walk in late to the HOA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and trim their grass in a month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and PAX East, we kind of talked about this is uh, when we we're talking about uh, Platinum Games, is taking place. It just happened uh, last weekend. And there was a huge Animal Crossing set up there, like a big, uh, there were people in Tom Nook and Isabel suits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they had like a huge space. Uh, so that must have cost some money. <laughs> it looked really I some- cool. I My roommate is a huge Animal Crossing dork. And she sent me this one video of this girl going, like just walking into PAX East. And she saw the booth and just starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I eat you. Totally <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I got like, I wasn't feeling too bad about uh, not going to PAX East until I saw this booth, and then I got some pretty hard ass FOMO. Yeah, <laughs> looking at those videos, it looked looked pretty sweet. I was, uh, it's a shame I'm not there, but yeah, the the full Isabel outfits, the full Tom Nook outfits, and they have some like uh, uh, projection mapped like water around the sand yeah. that's on the island on the floor. It looks really really cool. Mm-hmm. And there were a number of games and uh, demos and that kind of stuff shown off at PAX East. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is one I've kind of been following. They, mm. they showed a trailer for. And then they had Final Fantasy VII Remake there playable. And the, that demo is now available for everybody. Yeah, they just dropped today mm-hmm. on uh, PlayStation So Network. you can just download that if you're out there and you got a PlayStation. As Any- soon as you guys leave this house, I'm going straight to the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I my, that's didn't my plan realize too. that that had happened, and so that's now what I'm going to be doing <laughs> at this podcast. <laughs> We're non-denominational gamers <laughs> yeah. here on totally, this Nintendo totally. podcast. I'll, I'll play a fucking PlayStation game. Generalists, like <laughs> I said. <laughs> uh, anything else that y'all saw that happened at PAX East you want to talk about? Samurai Gun 2. Wait, that was Pax East? They showed it there. Oh, do they have a release date yet? No, I'm so mad. <laughs> I know. It was supposed to come out like Q3 2019. Yes. And I just like every day I refresh their Twitter page. And it's just like, <laughs> look, just like going, looking for scraps. Oh and- my God. Okay. So first of all, I didn't know you were a Samurai Gun fan. That's Huge. awesome. I love yeah. that game. If you guys don't know what Samurai Gun is, it's like sort of uh, one of these games, I guess you call it like, kind of a smash like. It's like single screen four player multiplayer game um but where you die in one hit and then it's like the person with the most deaths wins at the end that's like one of the modes mm-hmm. uh but you're a samurai a little pixelated samurai and you have a sword and then you have a gun with three bullets and it's like fast paced multiplayer action it is such a obvious game for the switch but they've been taking their damn time developing this game mm-hmm. so hopefully it's really good when it comes out Everything I see, I'm just like, oh shit, because they like keep adding all sorts of nice little details. Because uh, the original game was a very minimalist, like NES almost looking game, mm-hmm. but it had this really like raw edge to it, um, which made it like the very aggressive gameplay feel really good. Yeah, and, and that so, Dose One soundtrack, uh, oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool game. Yeah, uh, something cool I saw is Laura Croft is in Brawlhalla. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's interesting. Yeah. That's fun. Which yeah. leads me to believe that Laura Croft is probably not in Smash. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Rayman joins, yeah. then we'll know that Laura Croft has a chance. Yeah, um, I saw that too. 
Speaking of Papaginos or from early in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Papaginos? We know you're listening. <laughs> he talked about uh does that preclude Laura Croft from being in Tomb Raider or from being in Smash or not? But yeah. I already sounds like she doesn't have a great chance anyway. But yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh the cool thing about her inclusion in Brawlhalla is she has both costumes, like classic, like teal uh shirt and like her triangle uh, boobs. Yeah, the triangle boobs are to- <laughs> totally there. Yeah, they're actually everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like the more rugged kind of nature, uh, blood everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. that's cool. Look. Yeah, it's pretty nice. cool. And so PAX East did happen, but uh, GDC, Game Developers Conference, has seemingly been affected by the coronavirus. They are going to uh, postpone it. A lot of companies were withdrawing, and uh, then they they've pushed it out to the summer. Mm-hmm. So that's quote unquote, right? Like there's no hard date for when right. they schedule. So to. maybe it'll just be canceled. Yeah, we'll see. Um, there's a a group called Game Dev World that's raising some money for like the. In the you know indie developers who kind of were going there to network and put their own money to have some sort of online event mm-hmm. and to to help reimburse them. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can check that out. And obviously, the big question is, what does this mean for other events that are coming up, like E3? Mm-hmm. Will will it get pushed or get canceled? Uh, Nobody can see the future. I guess it depends on. I'm no, you know, I don't know enough about diseases. And stuff right. Well, I work for the CDC, so I have some <laughs> insight on this. Um, that's not true. But um, I mean, yeah, before GDC got canceled, a lot of people had started dropping out, right? I think Microsoft was kind of the final nail in the coffin. But before that, we saw Sony dropping out. We saw Facebook. We saw a I, lot of indies yeah. even were dropping out. And it, and it makes sense. I mean, it's like a liability, right? Um, right. If yeah. they're sending their employees, they don't want to be the ones on the hook for their employees yeah, getting sick. Yeah, I think that we'll definitely really start to see the effects of this virus in the coming month. Because um, it is not, I don't know, you know, it's not like a full-blown pandemic right now. Or is it? I don't know what you would call it, but it's I like... I don't think they've declared it that, the who yeah, or whatever. But, but it's like, even South by Southwest has like a, I think a petition right now with like a bunch of signatures saying like, you should cancel the event out of fears for the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom right now. A lot of people are kind of jumping to conclusions with this this disease Mm -hmm. and the way that this stuff goes, you never really, you can't really be making (laughs) lots of calls on this. So we'll, we'll we'll see what happens, but uh, it is a shame that GDC got pushed back because um, that was, especially for Sony, you know what I mean? Because they really have not had any kind of, PS5 reveal whatsoever. (laughs) People know nothing about that console. (laughs) This is probably a place where, you know, Xbox and PS5, we're both going to be getting a lot of game developers to start developing for their platforms too. So it's interesting to see how this shakes out. A lot of people are even thinking, sorry, I've been talking forever, but a lot, <laughs> a lot of people are even speculating that this might push back the release of Xbox Series S and, mm, and, and PS5. Because right, yeah. so, it affects like a uh, production, 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 manufacturing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of these places are getting their stuff manufactured in China. And that whole country is essentially shut down right now. So it's a very bad time to announce uh, a bunch of uh, big events, but the Smash World Tour just got announced, <laughs> uh, and that is sort of a uh, an overarching flag for a lot of competitive Smash uh, tournaments. That so they can kind of be unified, and there can be a winner of uh, they, and the, with a decent purse, like they've got two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars out there for both melee and for ultimate. Wow! So um, that's pretty cool, and it seems like it's it's not sponsored by Nintendo at all, but having it all kind of under one uh, organization is going to hopefully help uh, consolidate some of that. And they even have a nice thing in their FAQs is like. Is Nintendo involved? No, but now that we have like one thing, hey, you know, come to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're open. We've organized um, it for you. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. So uh, you think your piranha plant's good enough to apply for oh this? Oh my gosh, thing? no. <laughs> <laughs> I watch like high level piranha plant and I'm like, oh, I should do that. Um, Levi's made a very bizarre tweet today. They are doing some sort of crossover with Super Mario. So I don't know what that means. It just says Levi's crossed with Super Mario. If you want to buy some jeans that have Mario on them, I guess that's probably coming. I kind of hope they have like sort of like how Lucky Brand Jeans says like, lucky you and just says like, wahoo. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think they would have done better if they'd crossed over with Waluigi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'll say. We'll see what it is. Patrick, do you know uh, Mario's favorite material? Uh, no. Denim, denim, denim. 
Nice. You've yeah. never heard that joke? You never heard that? I don't think I have, actually. <laughs> I actually have not heard that joke. <laughs> you can only tell children. <laughs> Matt, Matt, that is the only time you're ever allowed to tell that joke on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> it is retired. Uh, Killer Queen Black got a permanent price drop on the eShop, so it was $20. It's now 10 Friends of the show, Killer Queen Black. <laughs> Uh, we love this game. We were playing it the, recently, uh, mm-hmm. just this past weekend together. Um, so check that out if you if the price was holding you back. It's such a fun multiplayer. Yeah, game. permanent fifty percent price drop. Um, I wish it didn't have to come to that. I wish more people were buying it already. But if you haven't jumped on this game already, what the fuck are you doing? It's only ten bucks. So with that, that ends the news. We're going to take a real quick break, and then we'll be back to talk about the Switch being three years old. <laughs> And we're back. And we're going to talk about our main topic, which is the Switch's three-year anniversary. It's the Switch's golden birthday, y'all. It is three on March 3rd. Oh, wow. Y'all excited about this? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in God now. <laughs> so the Switch has been around for three years. It came out March 3rd, 2017. And we're kind of going into now the fourth year of its existence. We're going to sort of check back in, like Matt said at the top, about some of the things uh, that have happened over the last three years. Last year we did on the second anniversary our joys and cons of the Switch. Maybe right. we can see if anything's changed on yeah. any of those. Sure. And then we'll talk about sort of, you know, there's a new generation launching, uh, uh, assuming the coronavirus doesn't stop it. Right. <laughs> um, what have been the highlights? What do, we, what do we have to look forward to? That kind of stuff. Um, so uh, why don't you want to start with what we talked about last year in terms yeah, of the joys maybe and just like initially, now yeah, that, how do now, we feel about it? Now that we're three years in, I mean, we do host a Nintendo Switch podcast, so we're going to be a little biased, right? Just a little. But I mean, like, it's doing pretty fucking good three years in, right? It's true. Totally. Like, I, I, think, I think this is like a lot of cons- – like, this – Console got a lot of momentum like really, really quickly. Yeah. Know? And I think it's for the most part held that. I think maybe the beginning of this year, notwithstanding, which has been just a dead year for gaming overall so far. You know what I mean? I think like really Final Fantasy Remake is going to be the first like big game to release this year. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Yeah, I got, well, <laughs> animal, yeah. You it shut would, your mouth. It, it would have been. It would have been. That's true. Uh, Final Fantasy. That's right. Before. Right. But, um, so, so, but, but, but other than that, I mean, like they've been pretty much knocking it out of the park. A lot of the issues that they've had in previous consoles of like having big, long gaps between games has really not been that big of a thing. They've pretty much hit all their release dates for the most part for right. the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's been a great console. So yeah. Far. And it launched, like you said, it, the launch was big. People were buying Switches left and right when they could, you know, yeah. Yeah, you um, couldn't find them for a while. It was really popular. And, um, I, you can't say the same thing about, certain other console launches <laughs> there yeah. were more copies of breath of the wild sold than there were switches yeah that's yeah. not which is bananas yeah <laughs> uh, i think the portability we'll get into this too that's just such a big factor like yeah. the the having a triple a experience that you can take with you uh yeah that's what i think sold it early on yeah i think that's what does it for me too is like uh david you've had a lot of handheld uh Game Boys throughout the years, mm-hmm. but I never have, and I never had the desire to have the handheld gaming experience. Right. Um, but I realized that I liked the Switch so much because I was in line to vote, and it was a really long line. I was <laughs> yeah. like, God damn, I wish I would have brought my Switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, li- so, okay, so I pretty much bring my Switch pretty much everywhere. Same. Right? It's wise it, to do that for that very yeah, reason. It's, it's always in my bag, right? And I don't usually pull it out when I'm out and about. Like most times I'm not, you know, most times when I'm not at my house, I'm not like playing my Switch. Sometimes I am, most times I'm not. That having been said, almost 100% of the time that I haven't had my Switch on me, <laughs> when I've gone out, I've wished I had it right. on me. It's like I'll find myself in a, like a like a like a drive through line for like five minutes, and I'm like, I could have fucking been playing some Binding of Isaac right now, <laughs> or like some Picross or some shit. You know what I mean? Or like some like modicum of downtime happens where I like resent not having it with me. Yeah, yeah. So I, like for 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 me, that feels unprecedented because there's like yeah. things I always carry on my person. It's like you know my wallet, my keys, my phone, but now like the Switch is the other pillar of stuff that i carry around mm-hmm. or wish i carried around when i don't have it right <laughs> well you never know when you're gonna find yourself in a nintendo switch commercial mode yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like waiting for a plane and you befriend like a young boy or an old grandma and you start a two-player game of uh snipper clips <laughs> i mean I, I have had that on an airplane yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah me too it's legit it's, it's great yeah 
Um, so any other big things you want to talk about before we get into some of the specifics uh, about uh, three years in? Or? Uh, we all made fun of Karen, but that shit actually, a- absolutely happens. I am glad that I have been Karen. <laughs> yeah, I will be Karen totally been Karen. <laughs> if, you, if you guys aren't familiar with Karen, Karen was the name that was given to by the internet <laughs> of the uh, woman in the Switch reveal trailer who like sees some friends at like a rooftop party and like brings her switch and becomes the life of the party. Uh, don't be afraid to be Karen. No. <laughs> <laughs> like being Karen has like saved parties that I've been to. But don't be Karen that the internet talks about otherwise, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, there's, I think there's another Karen, but I don't pay attention. To <laughs> so um, let's talk about some of our stuff from last year and then what's changed. I think, you know, what we just covered is the portability. Like that's more than a gimmick. That's kind of what we talked about. It's not just a gimmick. It really does uh work Mm -hmm. we talked about some of the hardware not being up to snuff uh like cracks and warping and switch the switch itself i don't think that has really sustained so i I would throw that aside well the cracks and warping were something that was kind of like early life cycle like scare tactics (laughs) from people yeah you know being like hey i found this one manufacturer's defect in the switch all switches are doomed Mm -hmm. you know what i mean that ended up not being the case however there are some pretty huge manufacturer defects i'll I'll go down the other list which i think is a not uh, not great wi-fi chip Mm -hmm. uh joy con drift which has proven to be a really big thing yeah and then the pro controller d-pad which is also not seemingly been fixed but you would think that maybe all of those might get fixed with sort of this v2 that came out but that didn't really happen mm-hmm. uh just kind of made better battery life right <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, which I've wasn't also, a huge issue for me yeah i've never really had a problem with the battery but i've also had trouble with the uh, left joy con connectivity yeah, yeah that, that, that happens to me all the time and it's so frustrating yeah. just like if you're like out because because then whenever it's happening i realize my legs are crossed and my controller is like beneath my left leg or something mm-hmm. like that as soon as i lift it up i could start moving again and that's pretty much unacceptable especially when you have controllers that are made to be held in each of your hands like casually like that's that's continued to be a problem that's something that still needs to be fixed to this day uh we talked about how uh, as far as a pro like a a joy that a lot of the games are some of the best in the series are up there in terms of like zelda mario mario kart smash luigi's mansion yeah i was gonna Mm -hmm. say i think that's continued luigi's mansion is really great fire emblem a fire emblem game is really great i mean We'll see with Animal Crossing, but it looks to be maybe one of the best Animal it, Crossing. At, look, at least looks to be the most comprehensive Animal Crossing game up to this point. Totally. <laughs> that doesn't mean that everyone has been, uh, you know, a home run, but it seems like they're doing a really good job with 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 the exclusives. Mm-hmm. Uh, third party support was something we kind of talked about that 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 it wasn't quite as strong, but I think that's turned around oh, quite yeah. a bit. Um, uh, there's like every single game has come to this. <laughs> I mean, that's not true, obviously, but it's like so many random ass games that yes. I never thought would come to the switch have come. Uh, Michael Cavanaugh pointed it out when he was on the show, but like deadly premonition, like who would have ever thought that that game would have ever come to the switch. I'm so excited for deadly <laughs> premonition too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have you played the switch port of deadly premonition? I have not yet. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I keep on being like, I think I should get it. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably yeah. get it before it comes out on right. the second one comes out. But yeah. I David, ha- have you bought it? Deadly Premonition? Yeah. No, it's not uh, been next on a week. good enough sale yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, going down the rest of this list real quickly then, Indies was a was a joy. That's continued to be the case. This is just an indie machine. Uh, they Almost u- to a fault. <laughs> They're too many, right. too high priced. <laughs> yeah. um, the UI was a complaint that we had at Icon. I think that's still a legitimate complaint. They haven't given us any customization or folders or anything. Uh, actually, a, a system update just dropped today that did nothing to yeah. the UI again. So I, we'll, I it's three years in. Yeah. Um, maybe I, I, it's clearly intentional. Right. Yes. Like, I don't think they want a fancy UI for this system. And it makes sense why they don't. It's snappy. It's quick. It's minimalistic. It gets me to my games really fast. And that's all that really, truly matters. You know what I mean? It was like with the Wii, like, that thing can technically read DVDs, but they, like, didn't keep didn't that functionality it, yeah. in because they're like, we're just going to focus on the games. Yeah. And that's, like, something that Nintendo has pretty much always done. Right. Uh, but, you know. I, Maybe you don't agree with it. I yeah, <laughs> I I kind of get it uh, on some level. I do think there is some value in a device being really good at one thing, but at the same time, I think having some greater customization and folders and all that is mm-hmm. kind of a big big miss. Especially when they've done it on the DS and the 3DS and yeah. stuff. Like it's 
you're not going to slow down the system that much by having a cute background. <laughs> Three, <laughs> yeah, at <laughs> least a background, yeah. right? And, and, like, the 3DS themes were amazing. So good. Like, the, like they sold them. Mm-hmm. They, like, sold themes for real money. I and bought I, like, one. <laughs> I did, too, because it was worth it. It, like, made it worth it. It was, like, it totally overhauled what happened every time you turned the console on, you know? Like, so it's... it's it's weird that they like perfected it with that and we've just seen nothing of it since. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So two more things on this list. Uh, the big one, the big con, if you will, is online problems. And we can if list them all if you want, but you know, no messaging of friends, no voice chat, no partying up options. Uh, you know, a lot of games lacking online elements. Uh, this sort of, you know, we only get NES and SNES games. That's our benefit. And Tetris mm-hmm. 99 is decent, but like, the rollout 99 is amazing but the rollout of the games hasn't been great you know and that's been the only sort of big bonus game we've gotten um you know the eShop being kind of clunky no reviews hard to search on all that kind of stuff so that's still a big i mean nintendo switch online needs to have a party system yes like i was watching a halo 2 retrospective of the release of I know this is the games, the stuff I watch online. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not no, snark, no. like laughing at that. I'm just thinking, yes, in Halo, you could do. Well, you, could, you like, know what I mean? If like, you, you know, harken back to Halo 2 release, Xbox Live came out and mm-hmm. Halo 2 was, we take for, uh, for granted the party system now. Yeah. That's uh, part of all consoles. But at the time, it's like, I can invite my friends into one party and I can take that party of friends through multiple games. Yeah. So it's part of the UI, not part of the game. It's like so Nintendo weird how is. that, which is so long ago is like revolutionary from a Nintendo perspective. Yeah. That's, you that's know? 2004. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like crazy how wild idea that was. That's normal now, but still not part of Nintendo's I, ecosystem. I think that Nintendo like got seriously burned by PictoChat. And got burned by Flipnote Studio. Uh, both were games about custom user content, drawing on the touchpad of the DS or 3DS, respectively. And uh, and it was used to send pictures of dicks to children and uh, soliciting minors and stuff like that because they put no restrictions on it. <laughs> and so they were like, oh, we can never do an online thing where it could potentially get to minors again, essentially. Now, obviously some of that is lax, especially with third party games. You can just plug your headphones straight in and have voice chat. You know what I mean? Or but parental like, controls or things. Or just, yeah. You know, or like, parental controls, but it's like Nintendo has like taken it to the extreme. It was like, because that happened that one time, it's going to happen every single time from here on out, which is like not the way to approach it. But at least I, I'm not saying it's right, but at least I feel like that's definitely their reasoning. Yeah. It's frustrating. Cause like, the other week you're like, oh, I saw you were playing Smash Ultimate. I was like, oh, I lo- would have loved if you could have sent me a ping on the Switch. Right. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Like, to- you have to like hope that your friends <laughs> are going to look at their phone in between matches to yes. see that you want them to play. Yes. Yeah. And the number of steps for for us to be in the same game on Smash. Or any of their games. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. To, just to, to like join your party and like talk to you and say, hey, when, when can you play Smash? It's like – six or seven layers of friction. Yeah. You know what doesn't have those layers of friction? What? Killer Queen Black. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the easiest game to party up and play with people online. It's in. so easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, the last one from last year that we, we talked about was DLC, and that was sort of a, a uh, joy, a good thing. I think Nintendo has continued to put out really quality DLC, and I think Jordan said this really well last week, which is the DLC that Nintendo is putting out is really for the people who are fans of that game. Mm-hmm. It's It's... They've done a really good job of like the people that are really into a game. Like you think about like Fire Emblem, for example, which I've been playing. It's it's definitely more Fire Emblem-y mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and same with like, you know, Zelda and Smash and all the games. They're, they're they make the really DLC for the hardcore sweaties. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like it's like and that's really respectable because like a lot of other companies will like hold content back and you'll feel like you're not playing the full game. And I haven't not. I've not felt that with any of the Nintendo releases. Like yeah. everything feels feature complete and everything that's been added on feels like something that like the majority of people wouldn't play. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know it's, I mean? it's harder and, yeah, and yeah. longer. Well, yeah, yeah, totally. And so yeah. it, it always feels like a good bang for your buck. And so they're doing, they're still doing a good job with that. I'd still love some Mario Kart eight DLC though. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so anything that we didn't cover last year that you thinking about in terms of like, that's going really well for the switch or going really poorly that that's cropped up. Uh, any ideas there or did we pretty much nail it? 
Uh, one thing that's really cool, uh, there's so many different colors of Joy Cons. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there's like, you can mix and match colors. Mm-hmm. I've seen people at like parties where they'll like trade Joy Cons. Really? Oh, uh, or like switch different ones. Oh, or that's how like, you fix drift. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you give, exactly. give away your it's Joy Cons. <laughs> That's a good point. I do remember early on feeling like, why aren't there more colors? And I still kind of feel like, why am I limited to like a bright purple or whatever, you know, or mm-hmm. whichever it is? Like, why can't I just get, why can't I just get whatever I want? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but there is more options in that. And it's such a cool thing for customization. Something that I assumed would happen by this point that has not, mm-hmm. uh, is more in, in talk, branching off that Joy-Con discussion is like different styles of joy cons like hardware wise Mm. you know like that was something that even before the switch came out everybody had these renders of like gamecube controller joy cons that slide on the side you know for smash uh, Mm -hmm. which would sell like hotcakes nintendo why there hasn't been an official pro con type thing yeah like there was that one that hori did and i hear that people like it but it the Damon X Machina yes, controllers. Yes, yeah, but yeah. why isn't there one like that that's like super souped up? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's very strange. It's like maybe it's because they've been trying through research and development to solve this drift issue and they're putting all their energy towards that and they still haven't been able to figure it out. So they're like, we're not going to put out Pro 6. If they I have could drift. see them being really expensive too. Yeah, and yeah. Being part of the but problem. I mean, people would buy it, you know? Like yeah. the Joy Cons are already expensive. A pair they for are. 80 bucks is not cheap. Nope. So uh, maybe we can talk about like games and software. Like what uh, we're three years in. What is some of the what are your favorite games for the Switch? What makes the Switch so great in terms of games? What do you think of when you think about peak experience in the last three years? Anybody go first? Smash. I mean, for real, it's not just, like <laughs> it's so good. I think I, that's I remember my when it was one. first announced, and everyone was like, "Oh, it's just a patch." It's like oh, Smash yeah. Four Point Five, mm-hmm. and it's like, not nah, it was so much more than that. Mm-hmm. They put so much effort into it. The single player stuff, while really goofy, is still very fun. It's a total love letter to games, yeah. and they keep on supporting it with more and more DLC and more and more patches and. They're actually like listening to community feedback for like how to make it more tournament worthy and all mm-hmm. that. So it's it they killed it with that game. That's yeah. totally up there for me as well. Yeah. yeah, it's like Smash and Mario Kart are like the killer apps for the mm-hmm. Switch, right? Like yeah. those are like the games that everybody should have installed in their systems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it probably last year too, but Breath of the Wild was yes. obviously such a big one too. Um, Best I, launch game of all time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? 100%. I feel like that's not an arguable oh, well, I mean, fact. some people might fight you with <laughs> Mario 64. Hmm. Nah, <laughs> I, I, mean, I love I, Mario sixty four. Right? Yeah. I mean, some people, not... his name is Robert Segovia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just ruffled some feathers again. Yeah. <laughs> I think Breath of the Wild. I would fuse that because that's a little bit more my game, right? You know. But if you chose Mario sixty four, I wouldn't be mad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking about it more. Like you actually might be right with Mario sixty four. Right. Like that was like groundbreaking, right? Yes. And they nailed three D platforming like right out of the gate. But it's like, but at least in the modern era, right? And mm-hmm. like the past like twenty years, it's like we so often see this like little drip feed of games at the very beginning, which we did also see with the Switch, mm-hmm. but like nobody noticed because everybody was playing Breath of the Wild for like four weeks whenever mm-hmm. that game came out. You totally. Know? And also, anyone that I know who buys a Switch, that's the first game they buy. Yeah, yeah a hundred percent. And when people are like, "What's the first game I should get?" It's an easy recommendation. It's like the yeah. most bang for your buck. I mean, mm-hmm. unless you're like a really hardcore like anime or strategy fan, mm-hmm. then like. I feel like the most bang for your buck can get is Fire Emblem. That's another but, big one, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, also, I Mario Odyssey is a fantastic so game that I put a, I've beaten twice, uh, which I can't say about many. I, I'm kind of a beat it and move on person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some of that's because of my kid right. uh, and wanting to play it again. But like, <laughs> I, I don't had, know what that is, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> but I had such great joy playing it a second time through, you yeah. know, um, which that, that game is great. Yeah. yeah. They I did hope, a great job of kind of like, because when they first made Mario 64, it was a very big branch and how they approached it and that they were building playgrounds for you to play in. But with the advent of like current technology, they were just able to take that to a whole new area. Mm-hmm. And it's it's great. It just puts a smile on my face just popping that game on. And they broke open the idea of power ups, right? Yeah. Like like everything is a power up. I mean, not everything, but you know, you yeah. can throw your cap on 70% of the enemies and turn into them and totally. use them. And that's such a really interesting idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's. All, I'd love to see it implemented into a 2D Mario game. Yeah. I think it would be really, really cool mm-hmm. to, to have like, you know, that kind of power up system for me. I, I can't really point to any like one game uh, for me. It's just like, 
and this will not surprise James West, but <laughs> it's the variety of games. It's mm-hmm. like, I, you know, I, I find myself going back to these smaller little bite sized experience games, you know, be it like Picross or Binding of Isaac or Tetris 99 or, you know, a- any number of these like little games that are like cheaper or indie or, you know, not like full triple A titles. I'll play those and I'll move on generally, but it's, I always find myself going back because the switch is such a pick up and play within 15 minutes sort of system. I just find myself sinking so much time into these little games like over and over and over. And they're always the ones that I always go back to. And I I also owned a Vita and it was the same way for me with the Vita, Mm -hmm. right? There's just so many great tailored for handheld, uh, bite-sized games that you could get on these systems that played so well and had so much polish. Mm -hmm. And I think there's no shortage of that on the switch and it doesn't look to stop anytime soon. Yeah. And so then maybe we can talk about software that we can, we know we can expect and maybe what we don't know. There's exactly one game oh, yeah, I want to mention before we move on. And yeah. It's Splatoon 2. Was, well, oh, yeah, we yeah. didn't. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, <laughs> I've we kind of fallen off that. Splatoon 2, but like I was, I put a bunch of time into that game Me for too. a while. Yeah. It was, it's just so cool. Like yeah. the whole game, the aesthetic of it, just the weapons are really creative and very fun. Yeah. And it's so cool. I can tailor to such a like casual audience and a very hardcore audience. And like yeah, one that's package. right. Yeah, yeah. A really, the Splatoon series is like the sleeper, like hit of Nintendo. Totally. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like I mean, it's not you know, it's very popular, but it's like it's the unsung hero, I think, of <laughs> of the Nintendo Switch for it's sure. Actually, why I bought a Switch? Really? I, like, I was going to buy a Switch, but when that game came out, I was that's what made me pull the trigger finally. Yeah, I know a couple people that bought it for Splatoon as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we got like a Nintendo shooter. Like a first person shooter, yeah. like a Nintendo Gears of War. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 It was great. I played a lot of Splatoon on the Wii U as well. Mm-hmm. And it was like really nice, not, you know, to finally have like friends that also had the <laughs> console that I had to play that game with, you know? Cause Same. I would, yeah. Cause I would, I would play on the Wii U and I didn't know anybody. I had fun, but it was like so much more fun to squad up with your friends. Mm-hmm. Now, that is very difficult to do. Right. If, 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 too. if only we could. <laughs> but once you get it going and you're playing with your friends online, it's, there's nothing better. Mm-hmm. Moving on then to what software, what games can we expect? Uh, some of the big ones, Animal Crossing, we've talked about a lot. But uh, Breath of the Wild 2, yeah. Metroid Prime 4, mm-hmm. uh, those are really big games that we know are coming. Any yeah. Y'all excited for those oh, or have yeah, any thoughts about that? To a lesser extent, there's some other ones that have been announced, like Bayonetta 3. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting? Or well, Just talking about Metroid Prime 4 for a second, like... Um, there's been a lot of talk about how the reason Nintendo doesn't like invest that hugely into the Metroid franchise is because it doesn't see super great sales. And that is true. Metroid is a series that's beloved by Nintendo fans, but doesn't have much crossover appeal. Mm-hmm. And even amongst Nintendo fans, it's like not a huge system seller. Uh, and same with franchises like F Zero or something like that. But I'm saying right now, when Metroid Prime 4 comes out, that game is going to be a fucking smash hit. Like, like with this user base, the amount of hype that it's drummed up over the past few years Absolutely. with its development, like, like this, I think will finally be the game that like catapults Metroid up to the, you know, upper echelons of Nintendo IP, which is always really deserved to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, being a Nintendo exclusive, like, you know, like basically created a whole genre of games, right? Like, yeah. like Metroid games like deserve to be up there. And I really feel like whenever, I mean, that is, if it comes out for the Switch at all, <laughs> we'll see by the right. time it comes out. Uh, but it's like, I think that this is finally going to be the Metroid game that really breaks through. Yeah, and I, based on the timeline that we know about, it does seem like it'll come towards the end of the Switch's life cycle. Mm-hmm. Are there any other games that we know about that you're super excited about that uh, are we, made exclusives? Or? We mentioned it on the way here, or to this point, of just Samurai Gun 2 and Deadly mm-hmm. Premonition 2 are two games that I'm personally super stoked about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah, uh, there's a ton of indies and double A, single A games, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them, that... Yeah, or on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah, there are some multiplayer games that are uh that I were to play Windjammers 2. Mm-hmm. It's coming out Dude, in I'm 2020. I'm so excited for that. I'm so stoked for that uh Street of Rage 4. Yeah. Um these are all games that will be on other platforms, but like it, because the portability of the Switch that I can like play with my friends mm-hmm. uh in the same location or over the internet. Like 
Switch is like the platform that yeah. I want to play these games on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to have a laptop that I would carry around with like Xbox 360 controllers and a like wireless adapter, and I would take it over to parties and do all of that. And like Switch has totally replaced that for me. <laughs> uh-huh. Like it's it, granted, you still have to pack up a dock or do things like that, so it's still a little bit of annoyance. But uh, that's it's become my party game. Well, console. I, I think too, like people that own other consoles, like would prefer I mean it makes more sense I think to buy indies on the Switch right because a yeah a lot of indies play really well on handheld there's the portability aspect the multiplayer aspect of having the controllers on the system um but it's like also you know if you have an Xbox like there's a pretty good chance that that indie game is going to show up on fucking uh on Game Pass, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, or it's going to show up as one of the free games on PS4 yeah, or something games like with that. Gold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's like, so it. I, I think a lot of indies find success for that reason uh, on the Switch um, because there's all these like options for all these free games that happen all the time. Like, you know, there's there are definitely games I didn't buy on PS4 because I knew at some point it was going to be on you know the free games that you get with PS Plus. Mm-hmm. And so it, I think that's a big reason why a lot of people are buying indies on the Switch. And we'll continue to even throughout the next console cycle. Mm-hmm. And uh, go ahead, Xenoblade, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the the definitive edition. Yeah, that's coming out this year <laughs> sometime. Yeah. yeah. If you want to play really old games, the Switch is your console. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm kind of interested in No More Heroes three. I played yeah. the, I played the first two. They're super fun. Uh, a little problematic, but in very enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> That's Suda, baby. Yeah, yeah. that's Suda. <laughs> and then there's got to be at least a couple more big games, you know, in the next few years. Oh, are um, there? I have no idea because there hasn't been a fucking direct yet this well, year. I'm sure in the next direct they're finally going to announce the Captain Falcon open world bounty hunting. God game damn it! For. <laughs> no way. Just give me racing, Dad. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, well, I was just going to say, I mean, what was the topic that you were going to get into next? Oh, next, I was just going to kind of talk about Switch in the future. You know, we've got uh, this next gen hardware coming yeah. out. How's the Switch going to stay relevant? That kind of a stuff. Um, I, I'm curious as to how long the lifespan of right. this Switch is going there, to be. There's the question. Yeah, yeah. I think like, because it's, you know, a, a lot of time consoles go on like six year cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, they've said they want to go more like seven to nine. Yeah. See, but I, that doesn't. That's what they want. Who, of course, why, you know, I think I want that. Totally. You know what I mean? I think that I'd love to see an iteration on the switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd love to see like a souped up switch Two, as long as it is backwards compatible with all my digital right. purchases. Right. Uh, um, switch pro. Yep. <clears throat> not even a switch. Pro. <laughs> I think a switch pro would be an iteration in between that. Right. I'm talking like, like, I feel like they can have the switch model for like the next, you know, 12 years. If they just, keep you're talking about like on. the ds that can play game boy advance games yeah, or something yeah like or, or rather a 3ds that can play ds games yeah. that's what i'm talking at this right. point right and it's like i think that you know and especially with digital purchases like those have to carry over and i think that they would especially now that they've put so much infrastructure into the eShop and everything like that mm-hmm well, I think to to stay relevant in the first year or two of this, you know, of this new launch of consoles, they have to keep the, you know, they have to keep this install size is what's going to keep them relevant, right? Like people that own it and 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 so if launching a new console too soon would be problematic for that. Um, I think I, that's the genius of combining their handheld and home console pillars, mm-hmm. right? I think that they can't lose, you know, people, you know. Even when the Wii U was selling like shit, the 3DS was selling amazingly. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, the, as long as the Switch is also a portable console, it will continue to sell well, regardless of how well the PS5 or Xbox Series X perform. Um, well, I think we can maybe wrap up with like what do you, we talked about last year, and it, it, this might be the same, but like the legacy of the Switch, we don't know. It's not over yet, but like sort of where we are now, has anything changed? We've talked about portability. I think that's the really big one, right? Like it's not a gimmick. People love to be able to be in line or or wherever and and whip it out and play. That's such a big draw of it. And for me, it's really allowed me to play at home when other people are using the TV or that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But even when nobody else is using the TV, sometimes it's nice just yeah, to lay back just and play bed, on your couch. Dude, I yeah, play yeah. portable probably 90% of the time. Yeah, same like, at this point. I very rarely pop it up on my TV. Yeah, <laughs> same. Mm-hmm. And then the indie machine, like we, you know, that's such a big legacy of it. Like, you know, 
the explosion of playing lesser known titles and and older games too right mm-hmm. i think like like being getting re- a renewed lease uh by by being ported to the switch i have kind of a question for you guys to posit um do you think that we're seeing a big rise in streaming right now because of the uh advancements that nintendo has made with it being both a home and a portable console because like you know pc gamers can't really play their big souped up pc games portably unless they're streamed Mm -hmm. same with xbox and playstation you know you can't really like condense those down unless you're making multiple versions of the game and you have multiple systems a portable and a thing or you know what i'm saying is they wouldn't want to go the hybrid system at this point necessarily because they're all about power but they're seeing but, the value of having some portability. Yeah. I mean, they're seeing how much people want to play on the go mm-hmm. and that the main way they can do that is through streaming. Do you think that Nintendo has pushed the industry forward towards streaming because of their hybrid console? I think that they've made portable gaming more adult. I think that all the previous handhelds, even though you could totally be an adult and play them, had that extra Nintendo child like... Fisher-Price feel. Yeah, yeah. and that now it's like, triple a gaming on the go and so i think you might be right that that it's made it a more legitimate quote i'm doing air quotes here <laughs> <Yeah>. gaming <laughs> experience make sure when you say streaming you're talking about playing your pc game on some other device sure or stadia or mm. x cloud or or you know the nvidia has kind of their streaming solution that they're pressing right now but being able uh, to take yeah, it with yeah, you, yeah 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 but uh, it's basically the idea of yeah playing triple a experiences in your hand like that wasn't really something I mean the Vita tried to do that, right? Um, but that you know, those games were made specifically for the Vita. It wasn't like the big PS4 games were also on there. Right. You know. Um so yeah, I I, I just feel like I mean I th- I think streaming was going to be an inevitability at some point anyway, but I feel like maybe the reason that Stadia pushed so hard to get stuff out is that they saw the demand for big AAA games in the palm of your hand. Yeah, I never thought about it, but I think you're absolutely right. Like yeah. it's, uh, there, especially in the hardcore sector, like most people didn't consider portable gaming like valuable, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, that's what, you know, nerds who play Pokemon do. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't give a shit about that. And now it's just like, Oh wait, no, but I could be on an airplane playing that game. Whenever mm-hmm. that like finally clicks in and you play Zelda, like on the plane, you're like, Holy shit, I want to yeah. do this all the time <laughs> the first year of me owning a switch was being like i can't believe i'm playing this game in my hand right now right yeah. you know what i mean and still there are games that come out i mean like send you a sacrifice hellblade and yeah you know and um and you know like assassin's creed black flag is on the switch you know like it's crazy you're the reason i rushed out and bought a switch because yeah. i remember we were uh, backstage at a show and you were playing sonic mania and i'm like holy shit that looks beautiful and you're doing <laughs> it right here and yeah. i want to do that you know what i mean it's not like a 240p ds screen yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah. i think your question is like such an important question because you're also what i'm also hearing The question underneath of it is like, do I want to experience a console game that's like the new uh, Senua game or Mm -hmm. the new Halo or the new uh, Uncharted or The Last of Us 2? Mm -hmm. Do I want that experience that's made for television on my smartphone? Yeah. And to me, the answer is no. I want to experience what the game developers intended uh, for me to experience it, which is on a TV. Uh, right, usually a giant ass TV. Right. <laughs> sure. Uh, so with like, I mean, if you've got headphones on and you're holding the phone up right to your face, <laughs> is there that much of a difference? Uh, yes, there is. In, in what way? Uh, the the differences in like graphic fidelity. Sure. Um, the differences in like maybe twenty to thirty sec- sec- millisecond input lag. Um, that's fair, and that's an inherent problem with game streaming at this yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, so. But I think it's an accessibility thing. I, I, think- I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. The, the steps that it takes to set up to play your Xbox or PS4 games on a smartphone, they're pretty easy. Right. But still, that they're still like, this is really important to me. Like the layers of friction are like, you know, seven or eight steps. With the Switch, it's like two steps. Right. You right. Turn it on sure. and it's ready. And that level of convenience is what really sells the Switch. That And the controllers and having that. Yeah. It- inbuilt experience yeah so it's like the streaming for an xbox or ps4 it's an afterthought they're not designed for the portability 
quote right. unquote, experience. And, and again, I'm not saying that streaming is equivalent to the Switch. I think that playing a game on a Switch when it's like on your system and built in without having to have access to some 5G hotspot or whatever mm-hmm. comes around in the future, mm-hmm. you know, like that's a huge thing that it has. But I think that this is just like a continuing pattern. When you're talking about legacy of the Switch, Patrick, this is kind of what yeah. I think the legacy of the Switch will be yeah, is like a hunger for that. And, you know, just how, you know, the PlayStation Move controller kind of felt like a second rate copy of the Wii Motion Plus, you know, and Connect was. Microsoft trying and not necessarily nailing motion controls like mm-hmm. the Nintendo we had. I feel like this streaming thing is kind of like a half measure because they don't have the infrastructure or the hardware to replicate what the Switch is doing. But I I just find that it, I just feel like without fail, <laughs> Nintendo are always trailblazing in, in this gaming industry. And it's like whoever's on their R&D staff, I hope is paid like really fucking well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it just amazes me that like, even when a console doesn't do super great, like people always want to copy what Nintendo's doing. And that's, that's, uh, I think that's the legacy of the switch personally. Cool. Well, Good I think, question. Yeah, that was, was yeah. interesting. I think we should probably move on, but any final thoughts? Happy birthday to the switch. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy switch. birthday. Switch. Happy birthday. Switch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, also, um, it Switch gave us a Disney Suits and Festival. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which we'll play one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> All right, well, we'll take a quick break and then we'll talk about the games that we've been playing. And we're back, and it's time for us to talk about the games we've been playing recently. Uh, who wants to go first? I can go first. Very good. I've been playing two games. I always play Halo 5 with my boys. Shout Very out good. to my nice. Halo crew. Did you know my uh, Spartan company's name is Butts? B-U-T-T-S? B-U-T-T-S. That's Very it? Very good. And just butts. In, right, just butts. Super buttheads. <laughs> and we got our first compliment from, some, from Miranda that said, nice company name. Very good. <laughs> Very good. It's you the first it, time dude. that anyone's ever recognized our humor. Uh, <laughs> this is your 15 minutes, Matt. Uh, yeah, here it is. Thank you. It's here and I'm glowing. Um, so there's been updates to Halo that like 343 makes Halo and they took out a game type and 343 has been like very silent on their changes to the game. Mm-hmm. So it feels very weird to like really enjoy a game where the population is decreasing to playing that game Mm -hmm. and they're making changes to the playlist to consolidate Mm, the gamers together. But the game, the gamers who still play the game are kind of like revolting to say, like go back to how it was um, and there's silence. And so, so that feels really weird as a gamer. Are the, are the modes they're taking away ones that you enjoyed? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a bummer. It is weird, but I'm still playing it. So it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> uh, I've been playing that, of course, always do. And then I've been putting more hours into uh, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, oh, okay, which I yeah. talked so about still a little stuck, bit more. Sticking with it, still sticking with that, and it's it's a great VR experience. Yeah, and I'm just learning more of how to. Uh, you'll come uh, in contact with NPCs. And they'll put a gun to your head, and they'll, they'll like say, "Give me food," or like, "Give me ban- bandages." And playing the Walking Dead game, like uh, like the old point and click games, I thought there would be like a change in story or like a a more moral meter, mm-hmm. <laughs> like it would change the story. Mm-hmm. But I learned if you just fucking kill them, nothing it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. So yeah. I just like got out a screwdriver, stabbed someone in the head. Hell yeah, dude! And then took their gun. That's <laughs> that's the escapist fantasy that VR is all about. <laughs> it was so weird. I was I I kept on giving my stuff to people, mm-hmm. but I realized that there's no consequences. <laughs> so I didn't do it anymore. Hell that's yeah, what dude. I've been playing. Bad boy Matt Stone. Are we? That's right. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, I uh, have been playing a couple games, uh, mostly stuff that I already owned. Um, uh, had been keeping the flip grip with me recently, so uh, I played a little bit of this uh, puzzle game. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like built within the Mutant Muds collection. Oh, okay. um, basically, like Mutant Muds came with like the first game, the second game, and then this kind of like bespoke puzzle game that they made for the series that uh, works in vertical mode. And so I was playing that the other day. That's a really fun game. Mutant Muds, by the way, goes on sale for like two or three dollars all the time. That's one of the best bang for your bucks you can get for like that price. What is Mutant Muds? Uh, it was like originally a 3DS game uh it's like a just kind of a uh you know run and shoot and jump 2d thing 2d almost kind of uh like 
very simplified kind of dumb version of Mega Man in a way but like it played a lot with uh, depth so you would kind of jump between like the forward plane the middle plane and the background plane uh, and that's kind of what it used to do with the, the 3DS with like the depth on that system it was kind of made for that but the games still play great in 2D and um, you know on an HD screen of the Switch it's really easy to see the stuff in the background you know what I mean so really great games overall and the puzzle game that's included is very fun so I recommend it um, I I uh, Actually jumped a little bit back into Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been something that Sasha and I, you know, we played through about, you know, 40 hours of that game and then kind of fell off. Uh, and then the other day, we just kind of had nothing to do and was like, let's play some Fire Emblem. And it was like amazing how quickly we got right back into it. Yeah. Because I was really worried about, especially when you play an RPG like yeah. that. It's like... What happened? Where am I? Recently? But that's ha- such a simple loop in that game that such you a simple don't loop. need to like look at a map and figure out where exactly. you are. <laughs> and it's like as soon as we got there, we talked to somebody and they're like, "Hey, there's a dance competition this month." And we were like, "Great, okay, <laughs> Got totally to focused do. on picking somebody for this dance competition. <laughs> that's all that matters at this point." Who's your dancer? Dorothea. Okay. Yeah, she really wanted to do it. We talked to her. She's like, "You know, I'm a really great dancer, and I would love to do this." And I turned to Sasha. I was like. It's her, right? And she was like, yeah. And so we recruited her on the spot. Uh, and then we did some battles. It was great. Uh, I can't wait to play more of that game. Hopefully we get back on that wagon and, and see the game through to completion. Um, and then other than that, just playing kind of the normal games. Like uh, you said earlier, we played some Killer Queen this weekend uh, at our friend Matt's house. Not you, Matt, but a different one. Uh, that was a blast. Uh, and then I've pre-ordered this game, but it's not out yet. Uh, I cannot wait for it to come out. Oh, my God. I pre-ordered Murder by Numbers. Are you guys familiar with this game? No. So it's a Picross game, but <laughs> but don't stop looking at me like that. It's it's basically a Picross game, but it's kind of like a weird cross with like a Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney style game. So it basically takes place in like 1996 and it's like hyper stylized and it's got these anime character designs. And it basically is this like murder mystery where all the evidence uh, and clues that you find, you uncover by doing pit cross puzzles. This seems uh, like narrow casted for me. Yeah. Or, <laughs> you're a pit cross fan. I love yes. pit cross. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it, 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 it looks incredible. It sounds incredible. The music is by the guy who did the music for the Ace Attorney games, which awesome. is known for having really great catchy pop music. Music. Um, uh, so I'm I'm psyched to play this game. It comes out on Thursday, same day that Castlevania Season Three comes out, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm going to be playing this nonstop. Um, so I just had to give a little love to that. I'll surely be talking about it more next week. I'll piggyback off that real quick then, and uh, I haven't really been playing anything new, but I've been playing the Fire Emblem Three Houses DLC, mm-hmm. which we d- I didn't really talk about this last week when I said I've been playing it, but it's a complete side story, right? Uh, like it's separate from the main campaign. It then unlocks these characters in the main campaign, but it's apparently like an eight to ten hour campaign, and it's really fun because you get to play as all you get to, in your party all three of the house leaders, and there's no way you can do that in the main oh, game. Oh yeah, that is cool. And so it's really fun to see these characters interact more. Um, um, and then the, I like the new characters. They're very over the top kind of fan service Like mm-hmm. we're talking about people that are really into Fire Emblem. The right. new characters are like very uh, unique. Um, <laughs> well, what, is, what does that know. mean? They're it feels just, like you're dancing around right. another well, word. I don't know are what the word naked? is. <laughs> <laughs> they're just very anime okay. to the moon kind okay. of. Okay. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Very like, tropey kind yes, of anime characters. Yes. Uh, it's very absurd. Mm-hmm. Like there's, they live underground and then one of them is like this really dominant personality female but when she goes up on on like and can sees the sun she's very demure all of a sudden this is yeah. what happens to her when she goes outside <laughs> you know <laughs> like, it's she's really suddenly a supermodel it's, really, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's <laughs> suddenly tokyo mirage sessions yeah. Yeah. Sharp yeah. Yeah. it's really ridiculous and it's very hard uh, it's very hard but it's fun uh and then i did want to mention this i've been playing a lot of smash and stuff but i wanted to say the it's not gaming but gaming adjacent i've been watching a uh, uh, mythic quest raven's banquet oh is that show good it is i've watched oh. the first three episodes it's an apple tv plus exclusive so not many people have <laughs> access to this sure don't but uh my brother-in-law has that and i get it through him nice. and i would love it it's hilarious mm-hmm. uh it's the guy from it's always sunny um that plays mac yeah is like this game developer uh designer rather because he's not the developer it's like who has an mmo that's super popular you know think world of warcraft basically parody right and it's just uh, they've got really great characters and dynamics and i love 
uh, pretty much all of them. They're just very funny. There's a monetization guy that's all about making money and doesn't care about the game. Mm -hmm. The writer is like this washed up sci-fi writer who's just very inappropriate. And just his character is maybe my favorite. Right. And I don't know. They've got like the, the, and there's some interesting like gender stuff with like the the main developer is a woman, and then they're they're I don't know it's just cool. It, that's yes. you've made me m- way more interested than any of the marketing for that show has made me interested in it. I just can, from hearing you talk about it, because it seemed like it would be one of those shows that's like really cringy or it's like trying yeah. to make gaming like accessible to everybody. No, it's, it's not that. It's at all. great. So my wife and I were watching something else, and it ended, and it was at the weird in between time. She was just playing around on her phone, and I just kind of was like. Oh, just start playing this because I wasn't sure we were going to watch the show and we ended up watching like two episodes back to back awesome and she loved it which was also like kind of surprising to so, me so it does kind of cross borders yeah a it does bit. like yeah. she was like it, it feels almost like it's possible you know what I mean yeah. but it's but it's absurd right, right, you know right. what I mean so it's got that nice like cool. enough realism but also very over the top we'll have to check that yeah. out I didn't realize it was uh, produced by like the production house of Ubisoft yeah that's, yeah. that's oh. where they announced it at the Ubisoft conference at E3 I mm-hmm. think that's, that's wild really cool Anyway, sorry, Brian, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. What have you been playing or watching that's um, like a game? So I haven't been playing anything too much new either, but um, I've been trying to find games to play with my boyfriend because he's not a huge gamer. Mm-hmm. And so him getting the Switch was kind of like his like foray into really playing games. Like, Come he's to had Jesus a, moment. Well, a little <laughs> bit, yeah. But it's also a thing that we can do together. Um, but he's always been the much more like kind of casual-ish gamer. He's never really played things that have like been super challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, so whenever I find a game that he might be interested in playing, it's like, hey, why don't we try playing this? So he got really into Pokemon, so I've been playing that a awesome. bit. Um, Does he have his own copy? He's got his own copy. Yeah, great. And so we'll raid together all the time, and we're currently trying to like build our teams together. That's so, really cute. Yeah, it's really yeah. fun. <laughs> um, I, the- I, I, I wish I had that, but we both lost interest. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like... He he likes collecting things, and so this is a good, like, safe way to put all of that energy towards and not fill his house up with a bunch of stuff. He can yeah. just fill up his boxes with Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, uh, on sale was Unravel 2. Oh, yeah. And so I've, I've just been playing that. that, and it's been really you, fun. With with your boyfriend? With, yeah. It's hard. It oh, sometimes yeah? Get, well, I mean, like, <laughs> I can get through it mostly pretty fine. But right. they're hard aren't. for him. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I played it with challenge- my son, and yes. But it has that great mechanic where you can yes. just drag him along. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, no, so he'll be, we'll be trying it for a while, and I can see he's getting pissed, and then I'll walk yeah. over, and he'll just jump on me, and then we'll just keep yep, going. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and there are occasionally puzzles where I had to be like, hey, we got to switch to single player, because you just can't, you can't, you're not doing it. Right, you know right, what right, I mean? Because right. there are puzzles where you do need both characters mm-hmm. to do the right thing. But. Right. Isn't it crazy that that game wasn't made for Switch originally? Right. Like it was like a PlayStation game originally. Yeah, it, right? it's, it, it is. I think uh, you're right. Yeah, it was like an exclusive with them for a while. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, an e- like, it's an EA game. Yeah, right? yeah. But it's, it's like, like made by some... The characters are like the color of the Joy-Con. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, how is totally. that not made for Switch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some of those... But most of the regular games pretty fine but as far as like if you, I don't know if you did the challenge levels yeah they, that gets get, tricky those, some of those get pretty hard we were yeah. trying to get through some of those and we were I had like, to let's quit. put the game down for a yeah. second yeah. <laughs> we had to quit there too but for the same reason of like my son couldn't do them and then it's me playing and him being like beat it beat it and I'm like well this one's really hard and you need to give me time you right. know what yeah. I mean yeah. or else like this isn't fun with you yelling at me <laughs> right. to like to do it's it getting scolded <laughs> while playing yeah. this game uh, have you guys played Picross together uh, we have actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's no, he, surprising Fun and I did it off of your recommendation. Actually, yeah. you mentioned it, and it was it was very fun. I'm very glad to hear. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's more fun than it has any right to be multiplayer. Absolutely, because it's it's a it's a solitaire game. Basically, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. there's no reason why it should be fun with two people. <laughs> um, and then on the complete opposite scale, I've been slowly chipping my way through Sekiro. Mm. Shadows oh, Die okay, twice. Nice. Like, I got that for Christmas, and I'll pick it up and bash my head against the wall for a little <laughs> bit, and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to step away from this for like a couple days. Uh, but it's really fun. And then I was at a wedding the past weekend and then i've also saw them for like the bachelor party and so i've been playing a lot of the like local multiplayer games and stuff that i've had on there so got back into playing some tower fall played a bunch yes. of nidhogg 2 which, oh, i love nidhogg god that too. game's so fucking good yeah it's incredible yeah, i feel like it's very overlooked and That's nobody really talks about it game. it's fucking yeah. incredible it's and it's perfect for the switch yes because it's just two it's just one versus one multiplayer mm-hmm. it's like the whole essence of it 
you can just set it down and play it for like just a little bit of time. Yeah. You jump right in. Incredible game. And it's one of those games that people who watch it are also totally engaged. Yeah. Because somebody will get in a run and they're going along and everyone's like, oh no, he's going to make it. And then they go on a run the other way and yeah. it's just, it's so tense. Yeah. And whenever it finally happens and everyone's whole room blows up. Yeah. And it's <laughs> very it's easy to follow game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this person killed this person. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's what I've been playing. Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, that does it then. Thanks so much, Brian, yeah. for being yeah. here with us Thank today. Thank you for that's, having me on. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. You had Thanks, a good Brian. time? I had a great time. That's Would awesome recommend. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Papa to- Gino, you can come out here. You have a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Just fly out to Austin, Papa Gino. We'll have you on. Thanks to Corduroy for doing the music. Um, sorry to Chris McKeever. Like we said, we didn't play Disney Sum Sum Festival. Um, yeah, I think that's that does it. Uh, if you want to find me online, I'm PDYX. You can find me on Twitter, Matthew, M-A-T-H-Y-O-U. On the internet, I am at Monolith Fiji. And what about you, Brian? I'm on Twitter at BD Bonnet. So first initial, middle initial, last initial. It all sounds the same, so I have to really <laughs> enunciate that. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, you can find me there. Very good. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, if you want to find the podcast on social, on Instagram and Facebook, we are at Super Switchheads. On Twitter, we are at Switchheads. Uh, this is coming out on a Wednesday, so I hope you guys voted uh, <laughs> yesterday. If you didn't already vote early, um, wh- who Too knows? <laughs> who knows what democratic hellscape we all live in now? Uh, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Um, you know, let's all together pray for a direct that'll happen if we all put our heads together <laughs> and pray to the Lord God. Masahiro <laughs> Sakurai. Uh, 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 other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you wash your hands out there, everybody. It's a dangerous world. We'll see you guys next week. We love you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>